Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to cook some wonderful Creekstone beef short ribs. We're going to do it on the Weber with post oak. You don't want to miss this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd Sassy, my better half. My lovely wife is out getting some retail therapy. It's Saturday, it's her day off. She's earned it. So today, I hope you're watching the video as part of the Barbecue Pit Masters of YouTube cooking competition. Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue and I are going head to head on beef short ribs today, and I hope you enjoy it. There's also 18 other competitors on different channels. You guys go check them out. They're all ready to vote today, and it's up to you to pick a winner. And don't forget, guys, lots of cool prizes for subscribers and people that vote, so vote. So before we go any further, guys, please hit subscribe button. We really would appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot, and it's not gonna cost you a darn thing. And be sure to hit that thumbs up, folks. Again, doesn't cost a thing. It helps us out a lot. All right, guys, what we got here are some beautiful Creekstone Farms USDA Prime beef short ribs. Now, they cut them down in the middle, which is nice, because uh, I'm not gonna cook this whole thing, but uh, let's open them up and see which side we are gonna cook. Okay, I'm just going to uh, cut it right down the middle here. And what I wanna do is pull one of these out and I think it's going to be this bigger half here. The other one I'm going to save for another day. And it's just going to go right back in the freezer. Now these haven't been frozen as far as I can tell. Okay. Let's pull this out. Okay. I'm very careful about how I pull these out, guys. I know there's a lot of juice in here. I don't want to contaminate the kitchen. There we go. All right, guys, this is the one, the half that I'm going to cook, and it just looks beautiful. I just want to show you that marbling there that uh, these USDA Prime Creekstone beef short ribs have. Uh, it's just fantastic, guys. You know, beef ribs, are going to be juicy, prime or choice. If you buy right, go to a good farm like Creekstone. There's a few others. They're all, all really good. Now I'm definitely going to trim off that fat. I'm going to try to get down below the silver skin and try not to get, take too much of the good stuff off. Um, and by the way, um, there's probably as many people that can argue about this, but I'm gonna leave the membrane on. Um, some people might score it, some people might take it off. I think it's preference, but I know because of the amount of marbling and fat rendering that's gonna go on with this cook, um, that's, these are liable to uh, fall off the bone. So I'm gonna keep that membrane on there for the sake of just keeping them together. So let's go ahead and I think I'll start from this side right over here. And so what I want to do is come in at an angle. Okay, guys, never uh, cut toward you. I want to just kind of get up under there. There we go. And once I got that little flap going there, I just want to cut right on through that. See right there, kind of get your knife up under there and then just kind of give it a tug. And then again, try to keep your knife shallow. Wish they had a uh, bubble level for knives. Huh? Wouldn't, that be a, wouldn't that be a cool little trick? Okay, I'm gonna get busy trimming here. I'll meet you on the other end. All right, guys, this is about as far as I wanna go with these beef ribs. You notice this little fatty uh, little layer right here. You know, I cut it down probably an eighth of an inch. I almost was gonna switch racks to the other one that I saved, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with it because I still have some beautiful 
meat here on these, especially over here. You can see that. Um, I kind of flattened it out a little bit, but um, slightly concerned about this. But uh, honestly, I think it'll do just fine because, um, you know, of course, I'm going to take the best looking rib off here to present for you guys a little bit later on. Um, this is going to go on the Weber, and I'll show you that in a minute, guys. Be sure to stick around to the end so you have, see how these come out. So you notice I'm not wearing gloves, and that's okay. Got a sink right there, and I'm keeping my hands clean. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to use some avocado oil, and I'm going to use my right hand. Now, I really like uh, cooking with avocado oil. It's not really too much uh, flavor. It just makes a really good binder for that rub. And uh, stick around, I'll show you what kind of rub we're going to use. Now, I know I got the membrane on there, but hey, everybody gets love around here, even the membrane. Don't forget the sides. Okay, now what kind of seasoning are we going to use, do you ask? Well, Uncle Steve's Shake Competition Cow Powder, guys. This has got some great flavor. It's just the right amount of SPG, a little paprika, and it is just so good. I've used it on a few, quite a few cooks. I love the way the bark comes out, and it just, you know, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to measure anything. It's ready to go. I know the membrane isn't gonna, much is gonna stick there, but hey, everybody gets love around here. So let's get that membrane seasoned up. I am gonna cook it membrane down. with the uh, fatter part of the bones toward the fire. And uh, of course, I'm gonna show you here in a minute specifically what kind of fire we're gonna be doing. There we go. All right, now, wow. All the flavors are getting all happy and cuddly with each other. We're gonna go outside and get the Weber ready. All right, guys, as you can see here, this is my trusty Weber Performer 22 inch charcoal grill. Now, as you can see, I'm using the snake method here. Now, I've got these chunks of Texas post oak that I was lucky to find while I was on vacation in Phoenix uh, last month. And uh, I chopped them up into manageable sizes. And as you can see here, about every three or four inches or so, I buried one of these chunks that are in uniform in size, kind of like that, like railroad ties. I'm gonna use this electro torch here, 1500 watt little device here, and I'm just gonna hit it right here. Okay, so there's two settings here. There's a low and a high. Low has got the heat, so I'm gonna turn on the low. I'm gonna get it up there right about an inch away from the first little charcoal briquette here. Now I'm using Ridge charcoal. It's got a hickory and oak mix. And once those hot cherries are uh, pretty well dispersed here, I'm gonna go to high. And that kind of fans the flames a little bit and kicks it up a notch. Okay, guys, I'm gonna let that charcoal come up on the Weber now. The temperature I'm looking at is right around 285. Now, this is after doing some research, yes, on YouTube, and 285 seemed to be the go-to temperature for these things. Now, I got a tell-true thermometer on that Weber. I think I could probably get pretty close. I'm also using our fireboard today for ambient temperature. Now, after I get it set and I put them on there bone down, away from the fire, kind of offset from the hot end of the snake, I'm gonna keep it rotated as that snake grows. I'm gonna shift the meat a little bit. I'm hoping not to do that too often, but definitely a few times, and that's gonna be the only time I open up this Weber. Once that bark sets, and you guys have seen me do this before, a little scratch test, that's when we're gonna start spritzing. I'm gonna use kind of a diluted water and Campbell's beef broth mix. You wanna keep these wet. Now, it doesn't need a whole lot of spritz because they're so juicy anyway. But that's basically how I'm gonna do the first half of the cook and we'll meet you there.
All right, guys, it's been about two and a half hours. I've had to adjust the lid and the rack once, you know, to kind of rotate it to make sure it's opposite of where that hot coal on the snake is. But now I'm going to check it out and look at the bark. And the bark doesn't scrape off with my finger. I'm going to start spritzing with the 50-50 water and beef broth mix. All right, guys, let's take a look at this. Okay, so there's my... Uh, current state of the snake so to speak and so what I'm going to do is just turn this a little bit take these little chunks of wood to help me out here there we go adjust my uh, wire here as you can see that's starting to flare up so I don't want to leave it open too long but notice this is where that flat that fat vein was running so I'm just gonna sop that up a little bit don't really want it right there like that I've got plenty of fat on the inside okay there we go all right that looks good right there now that part you know it's just a little bit of fat you know what it's not quite sticking so let's cover it up I'm gonna put the exhaust right over the meat opposite the fire all right, guys, as you can see, it's not even ready for spritz, even after two and a half hours, almost three hours. It's just a little tender on there. So uh, I'm just going to let it go probably another two hours. Maybe I'll check it in an hour. I don't know. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm just going to give it more time and uh, cross our fingers. All right, guys, it's been five hours. And um, I think I do like... The bark that's on there um, it's making me a little nervous because it almost seems so juicy that the bark's not getting a chance to stick part of it could be that little vein of fat that I left there about an eighth of an inch uh, but I tried patting it dry throughout but it was only in one little spot um, the area off to the side I think was a little bit more uh, lean so to speak not as wet bark had a little bit of chance to uh, set up there so I like the internal temperature so far it's looking to be uh, right about 170 to 180 depending on where I probe it um, and to me that's pretty good but it still wasn't completely buttery soft so what I'm going to do is go ahead and wrap it because I want to increase the temperature a little bit on the Weber closer to maybe 300 and uh, I'm hoping that'll finish out that process, the rendering process. And I'm gonna be using this pink butcher paper instead of foil, because I really don't want the ribs to boil. Um, the paper kind of helps it breathe a little bit, kind of preserves that bark. So that's what my plan is, and I'm gonna to stick to it. So let's get busy here. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so. These things are so juicy, I'm not going to even bother spritzing or anything. I'm just going to wrap them. Let's start from this side. Oops, sorry. It's a little bit of a challenge in this wind. I apologize. There we go. Let me go one over once more. And you know, that's about as far as I'm going to go with these ribs. So I'm going to try to get them nice and tight. Okay. Okay. There we go. It's really making me nervous wrapping them like this, but I think they'll do just fine. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a few briquettes back on the Weber. That snake is almost toward the end there, but I want to go for at least another two more hours. Just like it was cooking, I'm going to put the bones for the fire. Now again, as that fire goes like that, I might move it one more time, but otherwise I, I think I'm just uh, 
going for about another two hours. All right, guys, now it's just another waiting game. So based on extrapolation and an unscientific method, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna go for two more hours wrapped. So that basically, that's gonna put me in the dark. It's gonna put me right about eight o'clock on a Saturday night. So guys, I'll see you in about two more hours. All right, guys, it has been about seven hours now. It, they've been resting in the oven there, wrapped. I haven't unwrapped them yet. And uh, we're gonna take a look. All right, guys. Here we go. These pretty good. Okay, I'm unwrapping them carefully because I really want to protect that bark. Oh, there we go. Look at that, guys. Mm, that looks so good. Try to lift these up. Okay. Alright guys, well, as you can see, not a bad looking rib, alright, these uh, Creekstone Black Angus Beef are USDA Prime, again, almost six hours on the Weber charcoal grill, kissing it with some hardwood charcoal and some post white oak chunks in there for good measure. So. I already know that these are cooked. I'm gonna just check them for tenderness. There we go. That's what you want, guys. Nice and tender, okay. My Dexter knife. Okay, here we go. What do you guys think here? There's that bark. All right, guys, well, you know, I think they uh, came out pretty good, guys. These are prime and um, got a nice smoke ring, as you guys can see. Uh, that fat's been rendering for a long time. And uh, if there's any doubt you can cook beef ribs on a Weber kettle, no more doubts, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these off to the side. Now here's another reason I left that membrane on. If I had taken off that membrane, this would have fallen off, but you know what? This is gonna fall off anyway. There you go. Okay, we'll just put that bone aside. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and cut these up. Oh God, it's just so juicy, it's sliding over everything. All right. Mm. There you go, guys. What do you think? Mm. So I'm gonna try one. I think I'm gonna go for the middle here. Nice and juicy. Kind of see that. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. That Uncle Steve Shake competition cow power 
it's got the right ratio of salt, pepper, and other spices. That bark, I had my doubts, guys, that the bark would survive. Um, I've never done these larger ribs before. Sassy did an awesome job finding these. Mm. This is a competition after all. Vote your conscience. I hope you vote for me. And I hope Sassy votes for me too. Uh-oh. What do you think? Mm. Good? Mm. Juicy, tender, delicious. Mm. Yeah. It's all about prime, guys. Mm. Oh my God, these are so tasty. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. It's hard to describe how good these beef ribs taste. It's like brisket on a stick with this bone. And uh, mm. it should fall off the bone just like this easily pulled out. Mm. All right, guys, I can't say enough about this Uncle Steve's Shake Competition Cow Powder. It's what helped achieve such a fantastic bark and the taste flavor. all the flavor. It's just now that Black Angus Prime Creekstone Farms meat definitely got a flavor on its own, but when you bite into that little bit of that bark, man, that just as oh, that's the end piece. You like the end piece as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Folks, be sure to vote and vote a lot if you're voting for me. Vote more than once. No, I'm just kidding. But really, hey, <laughs> even if you don't vote for us, we're hoping that you'll comment anyway. Tell us what we uh, did wrong or right or, or how you would do it different. Also, I'm going to drop a link to Uncle Steve's Shake in the description. Be sure to go down there and visit him. Tell him Greenhorn Barbecue sent you. Hit that thumbs up. It helps us on the algorithm and helps us more than you think. So until next time, see you guys later. Thank you.